what's up guys war here welcome back to the channel man again dude we are just blasting through patch day and today i am bringing you an updated build guide to my opportunist grenade rogue okay this has been a build that has been a little outside the box but it did receive a nerf if we go look at the patch notes here you can see that some of the skills did get buffed force um rogue here so trickster's got an increase um umbrus did get a change which most rogue builds are using that uh surprise got a damage increase which is kind of insane and then when using shadow step grenades are dropped at the location the player teleports as opposed to where they teleported from which is even better and then artful initiative also this got reduced from 100 to 75 grenade damage is increased by 50 percent so this is pretty nasty it's a pretty pretty fun build so i'm going to go over all the gear skills paragon and then we're just going to do a tier 100 we were able to do a tier 110 but tier 100 is probably pretty comfortable comfortable for the build in its entirety we are running zero uniques zero uniques in the build you can run a helmet unique which we will talk about but let's go ahead and get into this and break everything down so we got skills here we're going to go over all this so puncture again is going to be our leading uh skill to use we will be using puncture for pretty much everything okay puncture will be used for non-stop just to make the build feel better and just run through this is what's going to help us trigger our evade so we can be able to evade more times because the more times we evade the more grenades that we can drop and it's also going to be one of our main ways to make enemies vulnerable then we're going to come down we're taking flurry the only reason that we're doing flurry is to just apply more vulnerability that is pretty much it when an enemy is already vulnerable we are just adding more vulnerable to all enemies we are maxing out sturdy for dr and we're maxing out siphoning strikes for even more health we got two points in the stutter step to increase move speed when we crit then we're going to come down we're maxing out weapon mastery we are taking uh excuse me shadow step into methodical so that way we, when we hit an enemy they are instantly stunned we're doing caltrops into discipline for even more damage to vulnerable enemies as well as the bosses we have our duration scaled up to 88 percent multiplicative so if we can rack all this up especially against the boss we absolutely destroy them two points into concussive one point into rapid gambit our evade cooldown is reduced by 0.5 seconds when you daze an enemy um this is just this resets so fast to be honest what we should do is do this because we don't really need this um however we could do this and do that this is probably better so we got one point into concussive for knockdown one point into trick attacks uh when we critically strike a daze they get knocked down and then when our evade is cooldown is reduced when we daze an enemy uh we got dash into methodical dash so dealing damage to a crowd control enemy reduces uh with dash reduces its charge cooldown up to four seconds per cast you could do this one dash slows enemies an enemy already slowed will be days for two seconds which is pretty nice you could do either one uh then we're going to come down we're doing three points into agile or agile two points into mending obscurity uh, when entering self in every seconds while self we heal we could just do one here which isn't bad and then just put more into trick attacks which is pretty good um max out dark shroud this is going to be our one of our main ways of defense here obviously while using umbris we can do the increased critical increased critical strike chance with with countering dark shroud but you could do subverting dark shroud for even more move speed if you want to get around but the crit strike damage or crit strike chance is pretty good we max out exploit as usual as well as malice for even more damage um on our amulet we really want weapon mastery or exploit as opposed to malice but that's our role then we're going to come down for shadow imbuement this is a main skill for the build and then shadow imbuement makes enemies vulnerable as well we max out frigid finesse which is huge then we're going to come down and we grab one point into adrenaline rush and three into haste for even more move and attack speed then we are doing close quarters as our key passive here damaging enemy with a close marksman skill or cutthroat skill grants attack speed bonus and then while both our bonuses are uh active you deal increased damage equal to 10 percent of our crowd control bonus which is currently 79 percent now we don't have uh this is going to be our marksman and this is going to be our cutthroat which is why we're another reason why we're rocking flurry so let's go into the skills now again you can use a helmet if you really want okay you can use a helmet if you really want it's totally up to you 
totally up to you. However, we do lose the power, and I think the power is more important. So on our helmet, we're doing uncanny tre uh, treachery. So dealing damage to an, a dazed enemy with an agility skill grants stealth. Now, how this build works is opportunistic. When we enter or break stealth, we drop clusters of grenades. Then also, when we... Where is it? Uh, where is it? When we evade or shadow step, we drop grenades. And then... Tricksters. Uh, excuse me. No, no, no. Excuse me. Uh, where is it? The last one for this, which is huge. Lethal Dusk. Evading through an enemy infected by Shadow and Beam. Grant Stealth. And then breaking stealth, we heal. So just remember, every time we enter or break stealth, we drop grenades. So we are dropping upwards of 20 grenades every couple seconds. And it's just insane. We deal so much damage, okay? So we have Uncanny Treachery there. Then we got Lethal Dusk when we evade through um, an enemy infected by Shadow and Vehement. We get stealth. And then we break stealth, so that's grenades. We got Concussive Strikes to Daze. Then we have Umbris for our defense on a crit. We get a, a Dark Shroud. Then we have Frostbitten. This is huge. This is mainly going to be used for bosses. Mainly going to be used for bosses. You deal 25% increased critical strike damage against frozen or stunned enemies. So this is nice. However, you could use Shared Misery here. I still really like Shared Misery when we're doing a lot of CC to enemies. So you have that option. Opportunistic required for the build. We deal a crap ton of damage. Grenade skills are increased by 80%. Then we have Artful Initiative. When we spend 75 energy, you release a cluster grenade, uh, which also stuns enemies. Your grenade skills deal even more damage. So how we stun is uh, whenever we spend 25, so we'll do that. The only way to do that is to rock, um, excuse me, flurry. So three casts of flurry triggers our full initiative. Um, there's nothing else that really does it because it just charges a cooldown. Uh, tricksters, Caltrops also throw stun grenades. And then our stun grenades deal even more damage and stun people. So everything is dropping grenades. Retribution for the damage, obvious. And then Band of Elements, this is really a, a power here that you guys can really just kind of pick and choose. Um, you don't have to use elements here, you can use something else. Um, but elements just kind of just add some extra damage. We do do shadow damage on the explosions, and then of course we have physical, so this is kind of nice. And then on our necklace, you rock surprise, okay? When you evade or shadow step, you drop clusters, they deal 60% increased damage. Now, I know mine says Trap Mastery on there. I'm trying to roll for um, Frigid Finesse or Exploit. Either one would be fine. You really want Exploit plus Frigid Finesse, but I'm still trying to roll. However, I'm out of Angel's Breaths. For our specialization, we are doing Inner Sight. Now, there's a couple. You could do either one. I originally started with Combo Points because with Combo Points, when you activate Flurry, you get your 45% increased attack speed, which allows us to cast puncture even faster which will reset our evade cooldown because of our boots attacks reduce evades cooldown by 1.5 seconds so we attack faster means we can evade which means we drop more grenades right however inner sight is kind of nice especially against bosses attacking non-marked enemies fills it when it's filled you gain unlimited energy and you get 25 percent crit strike crit strike chance which just allows your grenades to explode for even more damage so you could do either one i've been playing with both um, so it's it, it totally up to you. Rocket one for this showcase. I'm going to do inner sight, but I will tell you combo points is just fine. All right, let's go into Paragon. We have six different glyphs and one of them is super low. So we got fluidity. Whenever we cast an agility skill, we deal increased damage, which is fantastic. We have three agility skills on here, dash, shadow step and caltrops. So this should always be active. Next, we got Explosive for even more damage. We rack this all the way up for 554% stun grenade damage. Huge, okay? Uh, next, we got uh, Pride for even more damage to healthy and injured. We got Control for more damage to CC. Ambush for more damage against enemies affected by traps. And then Chip for even more physical damage, which is just great. So all this will be linked down in the description below, guys. Make sure to go check it out over on Mobilytics. Now, again, our armor's capped, our reses are capped. We got 51,000 life, which is fantastic. If you really wanted to take out the rubies, um, you would be around 38,000 life with what exactly I have on the build. Um, 
And then, of course, you could do diamonds in here and maybe even do more armor if you wanted to, but the reses are fine. Make sure you rock, um, uh, what is it? Um, plus vulnerable damage in here. You could do crit strike damage if you really wanted to, but we did vulnerable damage here. Um, but crit strike damage also works just fine. Now for the helmet swap, if you don't want to do uncanny trickery, you can do Godslayer or you could even do Shaco. Godslayer is actually pretty, pretty good. All right, let's go showcase and do a T100. Okay, we're going to do a T100. When it comes to potions, you have a couple options here. You could do advantage for attack speed. You can do precision for more crit strike damage, which would be fine. Um, you could do more max life if you really need it. Uh, you could do resource, but you don't need that. And you could do more armor. So really, it'd probably be precision unless you want the advantage. I would actually probably do advantage just to try to get more lucky hits. Puncture hits for 40% and allows us to trigger all of our lucky hit stuff here, which would be sweet. We got daze, freeze, stun, and then slow, which is great. So let's go in here and rock this. This build can be pretty tricky to play because you're always evading. So let's go knock this out and see how we do. Should be pretty, pretty fun, man. I'm uh, kind of excited about it. Uh, and we'll just see how we do, man. Uh, let's rock. All right, Pop Shadow. Get that rolling. We drop all our Caltrops. Make sure we get the Shadow and Beamant on everybody. And they should just explode. Let me swap. Yep. You just evade. Shadow step in. Dash through. It can do a lot of damage to... Ooh, ooh, my God. We almost died there. Oh, my gosh. We almost died. The AoE damage on it is fantastic. Remember, Shadow Imbument only lasts for six seconds, so just keep that in mind. I know it can be tough to kind of see, um, like, how the enemies are Shadow Imbued. I know it can be a little tricky, but you can see that we're, we're just easily, as long as we don't die to poison, we're okay. And we just blow everything up, man. It's, it's a pretty fun build. Uh, it just, I don't know, it's its it, its tough mechanics, it's really tough to play. Um, until you get used to it. It can be really tough to play this build. Because um, you want to make sure everything is shadow imbued, right? And then you're dropping grenades, you want to make sure you're keeping your evades up. But you do deal a lot of damage. The build is pretty, pretty fun otherwise. I don't know why I cast that twice, I only pressed the button once, but that's okay. Grenade Rogue. We're in here like swimwear. You can see that we pretty much never run out of shadow imbuement. Unless you're spamming flurry, but you should only use flurry to apply the shadow. That's it. And then after that, you're just dashing through and everything should die. Everything in theory should die. It's great for AoE. Just fantastic, man. I still wish I had a little bit more uh, attack speed, so that's why like where the combo points can come in. But you can see that the build is just, this is just a 100, guys. You could definitely take this higher. Like I said, at level eight gear, I was able to do, or not do, I did die at the end, but you can go all the way up to 110, which is still very strong. Um, and I imagine with level 12 gear and everything kind of perfected out, you can do, you can do stuff much higher. I'm trying to kill this guy. Why is it? Why does it double cast like that? I pressed the button once. It's so weird. Just pop in, drop grenades, evade through everybody. So it's not, it's not too bad. It's not going to be the fastest build in the world, guys. It's 
It's not going to be the strongest build for Rogue, but if you want to play something that's a little bit unconventional, something a little different, we talked about this when we first kind of made this build originally. Um, it's just so different, man. I think it's really cool. I know the devs really put, you know, some effort into making, like, Grenader be something this season. So we really wanted to be able to to use this build and have some fun with it. Uh oh, and I died. I knew it, I couldn't heal. I couldn't heal. I couldn't heal. We're running around. We're going around. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. Shadow and Beaming again. I mean, we hit for upwards of 60 million right there, which was pretty sweet. And that's it, man. It's a done deal. It's not a bad build whatsoever, guys. Not a bad build. It's a little unconventional. It's something different. So if you want to play something outside of Heartseeker or Rapid Fire, then this is definitely a build that I suggest that you try. It's very, very fun. Again, it's all Grenader, which is super cool. Um, I think it's just so different. Ooh, we got another plus three Dark Shroud helmet there, which is just awesome. But yeah, it is it is pretty fun. Now, you do have one other gear option that I want to talk about real quick. We don't have it on, but it is definitely an option. And you can do the Saboteur's Signet. So, Casting Flurry has a 30% chance to release stun grenades, um, which is is nice. It is, it is okay, but... It's not good enough. I'd rather just have a ring with an extra power. But if you do want to lose the um, Band of Elements power and the affixes on here, then just go with Saboteurs. You can try it. You're just not spamming Flurry for this to really matter. But yeah, besides that, guys, this is the build. Super, super fun. All Grenader. Pretty tanky. Got a lot of life. It's a little complicated to play, but once you get used to it, it's pretty fun. So like the video, guys. Let's get this over 100 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. The build is still very good after the patch and it made it even better in the pit so don't forget to subscribe guys and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one peace